Hi everybody, my name is Jens Larsen. In this video, I'm gonna go over the five ingredients that I think you need to consider if you want to have the perfect practice routine. So of course, we're all practicing and I think most of us probably also enjoy practicing, but at the same time we want to do it as efficiently as possible and we want to learn as much as possible, spending as little time as possible practicing. So there are a few things you can think about with this and what I'm going to try to go over here are going to be some things that you can think about. Of course I can't really specifically tell you what to practice because that depends on what level you're at and uh, what you want to learn. But at the same time, I can give you some topics that you can think about and maybe I can help you improve the way you practice so that you're going to learn more efficiently. Repertoire. So often we forget that we're actually practicing to play real music. And it's not enough to just practice scales and arpeggios and exercises. You also need to spend some time actually playing songs. If you get stuck in only practicing things as scale exercises on small progressions and you're not really applying it when you're playing all the different songs that you know, then you're not, you probably don't really know it and you can't really use it in a situation where you have to play some real music. So it's very important to also take everything that you work on to that level. So part of practicing your repertoire is not only no, learning new songs, but it's also working with the songs that you already know and then applying the things that you're working on so that that becomes part of your repertoire. So I'm talking about a repertoire of songs, but I'm also talking about really getting the things that you're practicing into your vocabulary as an improviser. So how do you get this into your practice routine? The way I work with this is that oh, I will set a timer and I'll, I'll say well I'm gonna work on this song for five minutes and then I'm gonna move on to something else or I'll use a backing track and then I'll say well okay let's play through the song with this backing track once or twice and then I'm done with it for today and if I want to do it more I can always do it more but also then I've sort of, sort of done my duty and then I can move up to whatever I feel like working on. Technique. So technique is the ability to play the things that we want to play. And of course we need to work on that and we need to be as free as possible when we're playing. And the main things and the traditional things that you work on with technique is of course just your scales and your arpeggios, uh, maybe playing some bebop themes. I mentioned earlier like how I use uh, Kreutzer, which are like classical violin etudes. And there are those kind of things that you can check out and they will all help your um, your technique and your ability to play the instrument. An aspect of technique that I think is very important and I'm also kind of covering that in some of the videos that I made on scale practice which I'll uh, link to uh, in the description of this video. It's the fact that you want to be as free as possible and that means that you want to have sort of a scale practice routine that is not too rigid. Uh, you don't want to practice the same thing every day in the same key. You probably want to mix it up as much as you can and then don't worry too much about playing fast. You can of course work on playing stuff fast and that is somewhat important for certain genres. You probably want to work more on being flexible and that means pra practicing your scales in different arpeggios. Make sure to just try out things like um, play it in, in diatonic triads, uh, play it uh, in, in versions of diatonic triads, uh, maybe shell voicing, maybe quarter arpeggios. There are all these things if there's stuff that you like to use and you come across in lines uh, that you're checking out on solos or if you saw a video on YouTube or something like this, then um, take those things through the scales as well. And what you need to be aware of with this is also that when you're practicing these things, one thing is knowing the scale, but you also need to know what the notes are. So in your technique practice, it can be a good idea to, to also incorporate the theory and the overview of the fretboard so that you know all the notes and that while you're practicing a scale, you know which diatonic arpeggios are in there. Just making that a whole thing and something that you can draw from whenever you're improvising and if you have a new idea, so that it's not too difficult to figure out what is the arpeggio from the third of a D minor seven. Rhythm. So rhythm is, like technique, a very big topic, but it's also very important, especially for jazz music and certainly also for any other kind of funk, soul, pop, metal or rock music that you play. There are a few things that you want to work on when you're working on your rhythm and you can be aware of. I think the two main things that you want to work on if you want to improve your rhythm are probably going to be subdivision and coordination. So the subdivision is the, the thing that whatever you're playing on, if it has a groove, that groove has a main subdivision. For jazz music, if it's swing, uh, it has an eight note subdivision and, and you want to practice being able to feel that subdivision as well as possible. So how do you work on that? So there are a few things you can do. The main thing is probably just to play with a metronome as a sort of a reference. So you don't need to lean on it and you have to actually be careful if you're leaning on it. What I mean by leaning on it is that if the metronome comes along, it should be confirming that that's where the beat is. It shouldn't be something where you go, oh, I need to go to where the beat is. And you can kind of feel when that's happening, I think. 
You can, of course, work with a metronome when you're practicing scales and when you're uh, playing songs. The first place you probably want to start is if you can play any kind of jazz tune, then try and play it with a metronome on two and four and improvise with a metronome on two and four because that's sort of connected to the groove. Uh, I found that it's really useful to do this when you're playing uh, bebop themes because bebop themes have complicated rhythms and uh, you don't get to decide uh, which rhythms you have to play. So if you know the theme really well, it's still going to have some funny places that are going to be difficult with whatever you put the metronome on and uh, that forces you to feel the, the subdivision a lot better. So I would, I would actually suggest that you try and use that as a place where you can start working on your rhythm if you know a song like Billy's Bounce or Straighten Your Chaser or something simple like that. And then you can always try and have the metronome just on the one, try on the metronome on two and four, maybe the metronome on dotted quarter notes, um, half note triplets, quarter note triplets. You can try a lot of things and of course a lot of this is really difficult but if you're working on getting a really precise subdivision then that is something that can really boost that in quite a short amount of time uh, even though it's kind of hard to work on. The other thing that you could work on that's going to help you just feel subdivision while you're uh, playing is to work on your coordination. So what I mean with coordination is that you're working on uh, doing several things at the same time. Uh, for me this is something I, cha I sort of worked a bit on with playing drums at some point and uh, because in drums that's really a part of playing and, and another thing you can do is to uh, maybe try and improvise while, while playing sort of a steady bass in quarter notes uh, and uh, recently I saw a video by Adam Neely where he talks about playing um, some bass lines because he's a bass player so uh, he played a bass line while he was counting out loud you're really sort of building your coordination and you're helping yourself being better at feeling a stronger beat while you're playing. Composition. So if you've seen any of my videos, you probably know that I'm very often talking about composition as a way of practicing improvisation. And I think it's very important that we work on our ability to compose lines and that we also think about our lines as compositions and as melodies that we can work on with that and use the same techniques that composers use to get better lines. If you listen to good solos and you analyze them uh, from that perspective, then you can much better understand how the solo as a whole works and how the different lines are connected. And that goes way beyond just knowing what arpeggio goes over what chord or where do they put the leading notes. And you can actually understand it in a much larger context. So the way you work on this is probably to take songs and try and play them and then focus on certain compositional techniques uh, I made some videos where I talk about call response and where I talk about uh, developing motifs and those are the kind of things you want to be aware of and I think there's also the kind of things that you want to actually practice having in your playing so that when you're playing a solo you are in fact composing a complete melody and you're not just busy with what the chords are and that means probably you want to train the ability to kind of listen to what you just played and then come up with something that you're playing now that's going to come out of that. It's going to, it can be a reaction to it it can be a development of it and or it can be uh, maybe just something that's going to jump completely somewhere else because now you've been doing the same for a long period of time. Inspiration. So if you're watching this video then probably you're already aware that you need to practice something for a longer period of time before you get anything out of it. And that means that you have to stay inspired and you have to stay motivated to keep on going. So this is something that's important and it's also something you can take serious and try to incorporate into your routine. There are several ways you can do this. Uh, of course, you can, all, you can allow yourself some free time in your practice routine to just explore whatever you're working on and just play and don't judge it. And uh, another thing is also, to, if you're working on a specific topic, allow yourself a part of the practice routine to also listen to performers who are really good at that and enjoy what they're doing, but also use that as, a, uh, as something that's going to keep, keep pushing you to, to keep working on it and get better at it besides listening to music and listen, uh, watching YouTube videos, is go see something that's really inspiring, like a, an actual concert. At least I find that the experience of an actual concert is much more inspiring than whatever record or DVD that I watch. So that's also something that you can do, and you can actually maybe even uh, support your local jazz musicians by doing so. So for that reason, you might also want to go see some live music. So as an extra bonus tip, uh, I want to add something that's not really a part of the practice routine, but maybe a tool that you want to use when you're practicing. And that tool is to record yourself. I think it's extremely important that you record yourself. It's a, maybe more important to actually have a device where you can record yourself, and most phones can actually do that, um, than having a metronome. 
So the idea is here that if you're playing something and you're trying to solo or playing a, a theme, then you can't really tell while you're playing if you're really in time and what is going wrong or if you're phrasing something right or if you can really hear the melody and the chord melody because you're so, so busy playing that if you record yourself, you can listen back and you can check. And this is something that's very useful. Uh, in fact, if you take lessons on your instrument, then probably a lot, maybe the biggest part of what you're paying for is actually for somebody to sit down and listen to your playing and tell you what you need to work on. The thing with recording yourself is that that's the mirror you can hold against yourself where you can really tell what's going on. You can really tell if the melody comes out or if you're rushing in the bridge or some other uh, detail in your playing and you cannot tell that while you're playing it. For a lot of people that's very difficult and uh, you get confronted with your own playing and you have to get used to that. But really this is also something that you can work on and once you get used to it, once you've done it uh, 20 times, then you really get used to it and you're also used to just listening for uh, the specific things that you're working on and that you want to work on. With these five or six tips for what you can include into your perfect practice routine, then I hope to give you some, th some things you can think about. I can't tell you exactly what to practice because we're all different and we're all on different levels and interested in different things. But at the same time, I think the topics are so general that there are certainly things that you can, you can sort of think about whether you want to work on them and maybe it can help you improve your own practice routine and you can include something that you didn't do before. If there's something that you think in my list here that I completely missed, that I, sh I should have included, then uh, leave a comment. Uh, I think that's definitely something that's very interesting because I know that if I get more information about what you guys practice and what you guys uh, think you should practice, that uh, that's going to help me. I think everybody's going to come away from that richer. So a discussion on that would be very useful for me at least. Uh, at the same time, also, if there's something that you think I should make more videos on in one of my five or six topics here, then uh, let me know about that. Uh, I would be happy to make some more videos on certain topics and maybe I can also just direct you to some videos that are already made on the topic of mine or of other people. Uh, like the rhythm video from Adam Neely, which I think is a great video. In fact, his whole channel is very interesting and well worth checking out. If, uh, if you like the stuff that I do, there's a big chance you'll like uh, his videos as well, I think. Uh, if you never saw any of my videos before, you can of course subscribe to my channel. Uh, I uh, publish a new guitar lesson every Thursday and I've been doing this for more than uh, two years. So there's already really a lot of lessons on my channel uh, and I cover a lot of things and all of it is about guitar playing, music theory, playing jazz, improvising, arpeggios, scales, reharmonizations. And uh, if you want to support me in keep making all these videos, you should check out my Patreon page. I have a small Patreon community that really helped me getting all these videos together and uh, financially helped me finding the time to make all these videos. So there's a new lesson on Thursday. That's about it for this week. Thank you for watching.